Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University. Now this is the day after the last video where I was up at Gold Hollow mining those veinlets and uh, the veinlets are a real pain. That particular area has had multiple events, it's small veinlets, it's just a mess. So what I want to do now is see if I can identify anything in particular that is associated with the gold. They're called indicator minerals. Now, when the gold is in place, uh, this has clearly been multiple events. There are certain things going on at different times because you got a silvery mineral one time, pyrite another. It's just a mess. So, what I'm going to do, well, what I have done, was I went through all my buckets, I had 16 buckets of rock, went through them and examined the rocks to find examples of various types of mineralization and hand sort those out. Now when you're doing this it's important that you don't mix stuff if at all possible. For example, this silvery colored sulfide and regular iron pyrite or limonite, they're often associated in the same rock. Now, if you can't break that to where you can separate them, just throw that in the ore to be processed category and keep going. If you had small samples, just break it up and hand sort the little pieces. I was hand sorting big. Now let me show you the easy way to do that. Now there's, there's two ways to really get a good look at a rock. One is break it and get a good fresh face. That is the easiest way in the field and it usually works pretty well. However, we'll start with a rock like this. Where there it is. Now you can see it's all covered with dirt. It's kind of hard to see what's going on. So, just take your candy cup, put it in there. Brush the dirt off. And now you can much more clearly see what's actually going on in the rock. And if you need to, do that. If you can see it without that, don't bother. This is limonite here. And that is oxidized iron pyrite. It's usually a pretty good place to look for gold. As a matter of fact, I found a piece of visible gold in some of the limonite on another rock. This is the second type of rock. This is iron pyrite. Right here, this shiny stuff is iron pyrite. That's quartz. This black stuff is another mineral which I kind of suspect is an iron oxide. Don't know for sure. This is what I call the silvery stuff. There's black and this is really shiny silvery. Looks like galena from previous experience. It's probably an iron lead sulfide. This right here is altered wall rock. It's been injected with quartz with some other materials. There's a I can see a little shiny sulfide right there. The question is, is this going to be good enough to even worry about? And then here is kind of a black mineral. I suspect that's the silvery mineral oxidized, but I'm not sure. Anyhow, I've segregated buckets or partial buckets. There's hardly any sulfides. I'm too close to the surface. Hardly any iron pyrite. So. Those five types of rocks are what I've got buckets of. I've crushed these two. Yeah. Oh, this one's heavy. Yeah. Mm. That one, that's a silvery mineral. Now I'm ready for the lime and the very little pyrite. Back to work.
Okay, so I've crushed all the samples. I've split all the samples. Got them down to my two pound standard hand pan sample. Screened them. Gonna have them in these pans right here. And I'm kinda racing a storm. We'll see what happens. At this point, if they get wet, it doesn't matter as long as we don't get a bound burst blowing them over. So I've panned down all five samples and got some rather interesting and unexpected results. So, go from the least rich to the most rich. Now this one was not surprising. What I call gray quartz here is basically the altered wall rock with some kind of mineralization, not much. And you can't even see anything in the pan with your naked eyes. Pretty much you have to get a loop. And right down in here there's just a little bit in with some of the pyrites. Now the next one you'd expect to be one of the best. Limonite. Now, this is a fairly good sized sample so I can be fairly confident it's, it's a reasonable representation. And it also, there's, these are pyrites here primarily, there's a little bit of gold dust in there. But not very much, I mean maybe a 0.01, 0.02 sort of thing. Now this one, this is what I call the silver cubes, because this rock has kind of a cubic cleavage there. You can see that's a nice looking mineralization, I mean that's like total mineralization there. And yet, down in here there's a little bit of gold there, 0 0.03, 0 0.05, something like that. Now we start getting a little better. This is not unexpected, the pyrite, because these were fairly good samples. I mean, I had very little, so because of that it had to be fairly decent ore. And if you look at this, you should actually be able to see Let's see if it'll take the picture. You can actually see some there. That I'm going at about a 0 0.1, about a tenth of an ounce to the ton. Then the best was actually this black rock. Now, I'm not sure what it is. I'm kind of guessing that it's an oxide of that silver stuff, but I'm not sure. It's possible when the oxidation process happens, it not only liberates the gold, but makes it kind of clump together in larger particles, I don't know. But this not only had a good amount of gold, a little bit better than the pyrite, but also larger chunks of gold. I don't know how easy that is to see there, but this actually has more gold than the pyrite. So, if you're looking for gold, these are the minerals you're looking for. This kind of black stuff and the pyrite. The silver cubes, which are really prevalent. There's lots of little veinlets in there that are stuffed with this stuff. I mean, this is a, a fairly large veinlet, but I mean, all, you can see rocks with just little finger cracks full of that stuff. It ain't worth crap. Darn it. And then the limonite, which you would expect to have a lot of gold, because it's just oxidized pyrite, um, doesn't seem to show as much. I uh, don't know if that's just this particular spot the limonite wasn't that good, or maybe the gold kind of dissolves as the limonite dissolves and mobilizes and winds up someplace else. Don't know. But this is the method you would use <coughs> to figure out what you want. And you don't do it just once either. As you keep mining a, an ore body, you do this on a regular basis because everything changes. Nothing stays the same. So you need to go ahead and on a regular basis do this kind of test. Every kind of rock that's substantially different, segregate some out, crush it up, hand pan it or assay it, and go from there. If you want to get a little more detailed, you could 
assay it and then do a like a 30 element analysis or something. See if there's some kind of mineral or chemical that is associated with the gold. And once you find that, if it's consistent, then you can look for that, which is a lot easier to see with your naked eye because it's present in much greater quantities. And it'll allow you to do your mining much more effectively and selectively. Now, if you look at that sky behind me, it kind of delayed me today due to the uh, that big thunderstorm right there. There's a severe thunderstorm watch, but uh, I have a warning. But I was also noticing what looked like a wall cloud back there. So I interrupted my, uh, my panning for a bit to keep a close eye on that, get a radio out here so I could get any weather alerts. Didn't see any rotation in it, but just uh, two days ago we had a tornado warning here in Tucson. They got good weather radar, they can spot rotation. I think it was just a good updraft. But uh, this is the monsoon season, and it has done this every afternoon for the last week, and it will continue to do so, oh, at least half the days from now until September. So, keep it safe out there, and happy prospecting.